synagogue and he took this big prayer shawl and he swung it over his head and he wrapped it around his shoulders and off he went up to the Bima and he began to daven and so he said to his Jewish friend what is the significance and he explained to him that the cantor leads the community in prayer and uh, he was very impressed. A little bit later on in the service the holy ark was opened and there they saw these beautiful Sifre Torah with silverware, decorated with silverware and he turns to his Jewish friend and he says, tell me what, what is going on here? And he explained to him, explains to him that the Jewish people read from the five books of Moses and these are the authentic five books of Moses written on parchment and he explains to him the significance and he's very impressed by this. And then afterwards the Torah, Sifre Torah put back in the ark and the rabbi ascends to the pulpit and he's about to give his drosha, his sermon, and he takes off his watch and he puts it on the pulpit. And this guy turns to his Jewish friend and he says, What's the significance of that? To which he responds, Absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> now for my three minutes. <laughs> your Royal Highnesses, Your Excellencies, Chief Rabbi, my Lords, ladies and gentlemen. Dear friends, we are told in Perikai of what ethics of our fathers that a wise man does not speak before him who is greater than he in wisdom, but as an expression of my gratitude to the Commonwealth Jewish Council and Trust for this award, it is incumbent on me to do so, even in the presence of the illustrious and learned people present here this evening. I am humbled that I should be chosen for this very great award, and am honoured to be in the presence of Chief Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs, and thank you most sincerely for being here this evening. I wish to thank the large delegation who have travelled from Southern Africa, including Zimbabwe, and particularly to my son Yosef, who recently made Aliyah and travelled from Israel to be here tonight with me. Thank you very much. While I truly believe that the honour is shared with those who made my work possible, I particularly want to thank Mervyn Smith, who is President of the African Jewish Congress. And he also happens to be my boss. <laughs> Without his passion, unstinting guidance and wisdom, we would not have achieved what we have. And I would not be standing here tonight. I also thank Anne Harris for her support and care. And similarly, I thank my parents for everything, for their love and for their dedication. But thanks to Almighty God, I'm delighted that they could be here to share this event with me this evening. Thank you. As I said earlier, I'm deeply humbled by this award, and I know I'm not the hero of this story being acknowledged this evening. I was privileged to have been touched personally and profoundly by the life of another son of the Commonwealth, by the late Chief Rabbi Cyril Harris, Allah Shalom, who emphasi whose emphasis on universality of the Jewish message of Tikkun Olam, of repairing the world, was heard by so many people. Jews and others, in the years leading up to and at the, after the end of apartheid. He stated in his booklet, The Jewish Obligation to the Non-Jew, and I quote, Faith is the essential unity of humankind, as creatures of one God and as descendants of one common ancestor, provides the foundation for the proper development of inter-community relationships. Recognizing the moral imperatives governing human affairs, men and women of goodwill can face up to the challenges of our time and make the caring society a reality. And this, my dear friends, more simply means that living Jewishly involves more than kosher food. It also includes tikkun olam, making the world a better place. I'd like to believe that by helping the people in the communities to which I minister, maintain the Jewish aspects of their lives as they want to do, including life cycles, the births, bar mitzvahs, marriages, and sadly more often than not, funerals, arranging Jewish holidays, as you heard, kosher meat, matzah and wine at Pesach. Our work through the African Jewish Congress supports them in their work of tikkun olam. 
Part of the beauty of our work is the knowledge that, given the importance of their Jewishness in their lives, this enables them to continue to live and engage in Africa and to support people in their local and wider communities, contributing to their lives in different ways. My dear friends, I deserve this award only to the extent that my activities help them endure in the face of enormous challenges with which they live, especially in the beleaguered country at the moment of Zimbabwe. And I'm thinking, for example, of a couple, Ruth and Ellen in Bulawayo in Zimbabwe, which, as you know, is probably the most troubled corner of the Commonwealth today. Every month we send kosher chickens and other supplies, including chronic medication to Serion Lodge, which is the only Jewish aged home remaining in Zimbabwe. Fortunately, this is an update to our website. It is no longer necessary to send truckloads of staple food items to the recipients of the assistance from the African Jewish Zimbabwe Fund, of which Sam, Sam Beneta is the chairman, and I'm pleased to welcome you here this evening. Sam is here, and just for you, those of you that don't know, his last visit was to London was in 1953, when he represented Rhodesia at the Her Majesty's coronation. <laughs> I didn't give away your age, Sam, don't worry. <laughs> As there is an abundance of these items available today in Zimbabwe, albeit at exorbitant, exorbitant prices, we now send envelopes of cash to these recipients to purchase food and supplies of their choice and at their convenience. In today's harsh reality in Zimbabwe, Alan and so many other Jewish businessmen keep their factories open only in order that their staff, often, run, often running into hundreds, remain employed. They know that often each employee has four to six dependents relying on them for their basic sustenance. And single-handedly, Ruth, his wife, established the support group of families of terminally ill, or known as Sagofati, an organization devoted to providing emotional and psychological support to the families of HIV AIDS in Zimbabwe. I'm aware that our work enables organizations such as the London-based World Jewish Relief to engage as they wish in Africa. Partnering with Sagofati, the World Jewish Relief provides school fees for 67 children affected by HIV AIDS, the majority of whom live with their grandparents and who are unable to afford school fees. Individuals also work through my office, for example, South African-born Lauren Travansky, formerly of a small freestate town called Bethlehem, and Cheryl Furman, formerly of a small town called Markwood. And when Cheryl got married in Australia, her aged parents couldn't travel to Australia to her wedding. So at half past two in the morning in July, which is freezing cold in South Africa, my son and I and a friend of ours traveled four and a half hours from Johannesburg to the small town to link up to Australia by a cell phone so that this old couple could hear their daughter's marriage over a cell phone in Australia. So Cheryl and Lauren represent a small NGO called Australian Books for African Children. And they sent books to Bulawayo to the library established by Ruth, which she so sweetly named the Rabbi Moshe Library. Recently, I performed a particularly moving funeral for someone who I had known for 15 years. Arnold Swift, affectionately known as Malume, which is Swazi, in Swazi, his uncle. He was the son of Rabbi Swift, a British rabbi who served in South Africa and chose to return to South Africa. Uh, sorry, a British rabbi who served in South Africa. Arnold chose to return to South Africa in 1994 to devote what would be his last years of his life to the upliftment of black people. He went to live among the African community on a farm school called Running Waters in Hazyview, near White River in Elspeth, an outlying small community which I have helped develop a new Jewish community there. Apart from his interaction with me, I'm finishing Lord Greville Jenner. <laughs> He didn't make, I'm still South African time. <laughs> time. 
apart from his interaction with me, he didn't maintain close contact with the Jewish community. The choices he made in helping to uplift the lives of the people he met, however, were consistent with the lessons about human relationships which he learned from his parents, who were devoted Torah Jews. He became renowned for the generous assistance he rendered to countless individuals, ranging from paying school fees and tertiary education fees, tutoring geography and mathematics, providing accommodation and clothing where needed, and assisting with transport to school or to hospitals. It was not a surprise that the local people knew that on his passing earlier this year, I was the first person that they were to call and that they were to bring his talus and tefillin. And therefore I buried him in his talus, which I was told he prayed with at home every Shabbos morning. His respect for them as human beings, worthy of the dignity that comes with a better life, was matched at the end of the year of his life by their respect for him as a Jew. It has been a privilege to share a life journey like this. Again, in conclusion, dear friends, I thank the Commonwealth Jewish Trust for honouring me in this way, and all of you for sharing what amounts to be the best birthday bash ever. Thank you.